afternoon all and today I'm playing with some flashing light circuits so here we have flashing light bulbs with a two transistor circuit here I've got a flashing red LED with a 555 and here I've got a flashing blue LED with a microcontroller so I'm calling this my late 1960s circuit because I've got light bulbs as opposed to LEDs. LEDs, well, they were around in the late 60s, but they were terribly expensive. So Wikipedia says, until 1968, visible and infrared LEDs were extremely costly in the order of $200 per unit. And uh, this circuit also has a couple of good old fashioned BC109Cs in the metal can. And uh, Wikipedia's BC548 article says, an historically significant series of transistors that began in 1966 with Philips' introduction of the BC108. Now I have cheated a little bit here because I'm using modern capacitors and resistors. I couldn't find any really ancient uh, electrolytic capacitors in my box of old bits. Now you've got to love this circuit because of its pure symmetry. It's just identical on both sides and then the two transistor bases are cross-coupled with those two green wires. So back to Wikipedia, multi-vibrator, and uh, that's something very old. But here is the transistor circuit that I copied to make this thing work. Now R1 and R4 are the low value resistors and I'm using light bulbs for those. Um, I'm using 22 microfarads for the two capacitors and 10K for R2 and R3. Now, fast forward a few years, I'm going to call this my mid-1970s flashing light circuit. We have an NE555, a red LED, a capacitor, and effectively two resistors. I'm using a potentiometer there because it just happens to fit where the two resistors would be. So Wikipedia again, 555 timer IC. Uh, introduced in 1971 by Signetics, the 555 is still in widespread use. So, modes, monostable, A-stable, and bistable. Well, I'm using the A-stable mode, which is here, and there is a diagram. And as you can see, resistor 1 and 2 uh, go between pins 7 and 8 for R1, and pins 6 and 7 for R2. Now, that very conveniently means you can use a little trim pot because one of the resistors goes between pins 7 and 8 and the other resistor goes between pins 6 and 7. Now the main timing capacitor is strapped between pins 1 and 2 and the output is on pin 3. So there's my tantalum 3.3 microfarads uh, between pins 1 and 2 and the LED which I've soldered a resistor to so that it has current limiting is between pins one and three. Now there's also a wire link running between pin two and pin six. So fast forward about 20 years or so to the mid 1990s and we have the PIC microcontroller flashing a blue LED this time. So in Wikipedia's uh, LED light emitting diode article we have the first high brightness blue LED was demonstrated by Shuji Nakamura of Nichia Corporation in 1994. And on microcontrollers, uh, Wikipedia say the first microprocessor was the Intel 4004 released in 1971, but you have to come down a little bit to... In 1993, the introduction of EEPROM memory allowed microcontrollers, beginning with the micro pick, uh, microchip PIC 16C84, actually was it a C84? I can't remember now, to be electrically erased. Now I'm cheating a bit here again because this is a 12F683 which is a flash based pick and these came out a fair bit later um, after the EEPROM or the EEPROM versions that preceded it. Now the other thing you'll notice about the uh, microcontroller circuit is if I had to go to a different battery pack because microcontrollers typically have a lower voltage range, I'm using 4.8 volts here, the 555 is perfectly happy on 9 volts, as is the flashing bulb transistor circuit. Now let's talk transistor count for a little moment. Uh, this circuit here, well the transistor count is 2 quite obviously, you can see them both 
two BC 109s. Now the 555 apparently has 23 transistors inside the integrated circuit. What about the PIC? Well, it's difficult to find an exact count, but certainly tens of thousands. And if we include the memory areas, which would be the flash ROM, the static RAM and the EEPROM, possibly as much as hundreds of thousands of transistors. And because of the enormous complexity of the microcontroller, you can actually flash the LED in numerous different ways. I mean, the classic one is turn the LED on, then do lots of counting to just waste time, turn the LED off and do the same counting again. But this pick here is actually using the watchdog timer. So it's allowing the watchdog timer to time out. The chip then reboots, and every time it reboots, it changes the state of the LED. And there are lots of other ways you can flash an LED using a microcontroller. Now let's come right up to date, 2014, and what's the best way to flash an LED? Well, from my point of view, you just buy a module. So here are two modules, both reasonably cheap, both bought on eBay. Now this one uses a little surface mount 555, but all the components are on the board, potentiometers for R1 and R2, range of different capacitors which you can select with these little jumper links. And then the other alternative is a microcontroller. This is an Atmel ATmega328P, but of course you'll recognize this as an Arduino Nano. Once again, the LED is on the board. I don't have to do any soldering. I just power it up. Now, of course, with the Arduino, the easiest way to power it up is with USB. This is plugged into my PC. And once again, I have a flashing LED. But which is best? Which is best? Okay, well, let's start with which is cheapest. Here's a Nano 3.0 with CH340 driver from the good and cheap supermarket. And that's three dollars and nine cents. And here's the little 555 surface mount module that I have. And this is one dollar fifty one free shipping. And that's from Aki City 2006. So the 555 wins. It's half the price. Now, what about flexibility? Let's look at uh, changing the speed of the flashing. Well, on the 555 module, that's relatively easy. I'm just going to bring my trim pot tool onto there and uh, start turning it clockwise and that's now oh, that's gone too far and that's now flashing more quickly well that was relatively easy and how do I change the speed of flashing on the Arduino well for that I have to uh, run up the integrated development environment on my PC, I have to come down to the pieces of code which define the timings here. I've got to edit that one. Well, let's go twice as fast, 500 milliseconds, and also the off time, 500 milliseconds. Then I've got to come up here and uh, compile the software. So that's down there, that's compiling, compiling the sketch, uploading it to the Arduino. And uh, there we are, the little light on the Arduino is flashing twice as fast as it was before. Well now, which is the easiest? I think uh, the 555 wins this one really for flexibility on the speed of flashing. Now what about flexibility in terms of the pattern of flashing? So by uh, copying some of this software and changing, uh, duplicating it and changing it, I've got uh, high for 100, low for 100, high for 100, and low for 1,000 milliseconds. So now the Arduino is doing something a bit different. Flash, flash. Flash, flash. It's doing a double flash. Now, can the 555 do that? No, it can't. So the uh, Arduino is a very clear winner here. The 555 might be able to do it if you perhaps added another 555, and we're quite clever about the circuitry. But uh, no, 555 fails this challenge. Now, what about flexibility of supply voltage? I'm running the 555 from a 9 volt battery and the Arduino, of course, I'm running from 5 volt USB. But let's have a look at the data sheets. So the 555 is saying supply voltage 4.5 to 16 volts. 
and the 80 mega 328p is showing here VCC 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts. But these modules have additional components, and in particular, the Arduino has a voltage regulator there. It's the AMS1117. And in the absolute maximum ratings, this has a maximum input voltage of just 15 volts. I'm surprised. That seems quite low to me. But it does mean that by connecting my power supply to the regulator input rather than directly to the chip, I can run the Nano from a 9 volt battery in the same way that the 555 runs from a 9 volt battery. So I'm tempted to call this one a draw. So which is the winner? Well, there is no winner, is there? I mean, look at the beautiful elegance and symmetry of the old two transistor A stable multi vibrator. It's beautiful. And look at the 555, it's so simple to use. Again, elegant. But look at the complexity and flexibility of the Arduino and the PIC uh, microcontroller versions. You can do things like flash patterns rather than just on and off flashing. So I declare electronics itself the winner of this challenge because let's face it, what more fun could you have on a Sunday afternoon than mess about with all this stuff?